Hey guys, welcome back to Shelby on Safari. I hope you're well. Today is a really exciting day because we get to tell a story and not just any story. This is a story about conservation, challenges, and collaboration. And with that in mind, I won't be telling this story alone. My buddy Alex Collins will be joining us today and it's so exciting because he is a fantastic YouTube creator. In fact, his channel focuses on conservation. So I thought what better person to talk about conservation than him. In fact, one of my favorite videos of his deals on the Pine Martins here in the UK and you can check it up out here. But first, before we dive right on into this impressive invertebrate conservation story, if you're new here and you want to learn all about animals in the wild or in pop culture, be sure to hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding so you can be the first to see all the new content. Now, over to you, Alex. Hi there, Shelby. Thank you so much for inviting me on the channel today. Uh, just in advance, I apologise for my muddy hands. I just embarrassingly fell over. But anyway, invertebrates like the fen raft spider are not only really cool, but incredibly important. And I'm about to give you some key reasons for why that is. So let's get right into it. Invertebrates provide us with a huge range of essential ecosystem services, like pollination, for example which is crucial for food production. They also get involved in the predation of crop pests, which again is really important for food production. So if like myself, you're a fan of food, like many of us are on this planet, then it's definitely a good idea to take care of our invertebrate species. But invertebrates aren't just important to us humans. They actually form the basis of nearly every food chain. For example, insects are an important food source for small mammals. Then small mammals act as an important food source for bigger birds and so on. What I'm trying to say is that nature is interconnected in complex webs. Take one link out of that chain and the whole thing is at risk of falling apart. So surely everyone sees insects and invertebrates as really important, right? Wrong. Invertebrate species worldwide are facing a huge variety of threats like climate change, pollution, pesticides and invasive species. The list goes on. In fact, a recent study by the Zoological Society of London here in the UK found that one fifth of all invertebrate species in the world are facing risk of extinction. Despite this, invertebrate species are still massively undervalued when compared to other vertebrate species. One really exciting thing about invertebrates is that it's so likely that there are a load of species that haven't even been discovered yet. In fact, some species may even go extinct before they're known to exist. How tragic would that be? But invertebrate research isn't just cool, it can also be really important to us humans. For example, in medicine, there is a really wide variety of uses for invertebrate research in both medicine, food production, agriculture, anything. So it's so important that we value them. Invertebrates might not always be as cute or good looking as other creatures, but they are just as important and we need to help people appreciate this more. That's why it's so important to watch videos like Shelby's and share them as well. You can of course feel free to watch my videos too. For example, I made a video on what wildlife conservation is and why it's so important to us and why it's crucial that we save endangered species. So feel free to go and check those videos out after watching this one. So that's all from me. I hope that now we can all appreciate invertebrates just that little bit more. Thank you so much to Shelby for having me on her channel. Make sure to go and subscribe. See you soon. Thank you so much, Alex. That was a fantastic explanation of why invertebrates are important to us. But now it's time to meet the star of our story, the Finraf spider or Dolomedes plantarius. During all life stages, the great raft spider, or fen raft spider, lives close to water. They're quite a unique species of spider as they are able to hunt both on land and into water. As Alex mentioned, they play an important part in their own little ecosystems. They eat water invertebrates, but sometimes also catch tadpoles and fishes and they themselves are in turn eaten by predators such as birds. Not all spiders build webs, 
as seen in my other video on spiders, which you can check out up here. The Fenraff spider is one of those species. They don't build webs to capture prey, nor do they run after prey either. Instead, they sit and wait until it's within easy reach, whether this be on land or on top of the water, as seen here. Using long, fine hairs called trichobotheria that are on their legs, this spider has an excellent vibratory sensory system that essentially allows them to detect movements in the air and on the water, caused by both prey and even potential predators. Now they don't get the name great for nothing. These guys are rather large. In fact, they're about the size of the palm of your hand. So if these guys don't use webs to capture prey, do they have silk or do they make any kind of webs? After all, they are spiders. Well, they only use silk as a retreat or to construct a nursery web of cute little baby spiderlings. Fenraff spiders live throughout Central and Western Europe and even found here in the UK. They were only first discovered here in 1956 and only three populations have been found since. Being restricted to only three sites here in the UK makes this spider very vulnerable to extinction. So, what happened? And how are these spiders doing today? So now for the theme of challenges. In conservation, there are certainly plenty of them. And in this case, there was no exception. Well, it started with a species action plan that was first produced in 1999 and has been revised since. For two years, British Arachnological Society experts surveyed potential suitable habitats for potential translocations. Many studies were also done during this time to measure behavior and see the best way of rearing baby spiderlings in captivity. The first release of baby spiderlings happened in October 2010. Then from 2011 till 2013, 10 zoos that are Biaza accredited got involved with helping rear baby spiders for release into the wild. They use their expert knowledge to make this process go as spiderific as possible. In fact, between 2010 and 2015, around 6,000 hand reared three-month-old Benraff spiderlings and 56 adult females with their nurseries that contain hundreds of week-old spiderlings were released at two new sites here in the UK. This conservation program required a lot of different people working together from a variety of different organizations, from Natural England to the Wildlife Trust to Biaza Zoos to the RSPB joining the partnership. It required coordination, which nowadays is quite a hard thing to come by. And as you can imagine, the challenges faced by these teams day in and day out were plenty. And it was through collaboration and the hard work of many individuals across the nation coming together to save the Fenraff spider. And I'm pleased to say it does certainly seem like they are on the path to recovery. The reason why I wanted to share this story today was to bring a message of hope and to show what humans can do when they come together and work together for the betterment of animals and our planet. It inspires and encourages me to continue collaborating with creators that are awesome like Alex and really just strive to be a better person in general because when we work together, around the world, or even just with our neighbors, the things we can achieve are incredible. Take for example, the Biaza zoos that came together to rear spiderlings that were then released into the wild. In fact, it's fair to say that without the cooperation and collaboration of these Biaza collections, the Fenraff spider probably wouldn't be making the comeback that it is today. 
which is why I challenge you to step up to save our zoos. Hashtag save our, hashtag save our zoos. Because as you know, with the current state of the world, <sighs> things are pretty gnarly and zoological collections, not just here in the UK, but around the world are struggling. The work that they do of raising awareness, saving species from extinction are invaluable. Obviously, I'm a bit biased because I grew up at the zoo, essentially, and have worked in a lot of zoological collections. However, I hope with sharing this story and seeing just what zoos can do and have done might do just a little part to raise some awareness about the amazing collections that are around the world. I encourage you to share stories, share photos from some of your favorite zoo experiences. And if you do, use the hashtag Save Our Zoos and also let me know as well because I love seeing pictures from different zoos around the world. With that in mind, let me know in the comments below what your favorite zoological collection is. And before we go, I just want to say thank you so much again to Alex for joining me. You are an amazing creator and you do fantastic work raising awareness of conservation. And guys, if you haven't checked out his channel already, do so. You got no excuse. I've put the links everywhere and they're in the description below. So go check him out. Have a great rest of the week, guys, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye.